All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and fellow fishing accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So we are now starting to get into September. It is like the first weekend or second weekend of September, second weekend. And we are going to be fishing the Western Sound right now and hopefully getting on some action. Um, mostly get, we're supposed to get some pretty good conditions right now. I could do a little more exploration, hit the South Shore, but I just had my first like legitimate week of work and I've just been a little bit tired readjusting to that for the school year. So I'm just gonna stay close to home right now and it's probably gonna be a porgy fest, but I bet there might be some nice fluke in the mix too after last weekend. So you know what to expect. We're gonna be fishing the gulp, uh, jig heads, bucktails, etc. Uh, mainly single jig, I imagine. And unless the tide's dead low, which I don't think it is, uh, I don't particularly expect me using bait um but yeah either way we're gonna find something and hopefully it's a good episode uh, i'm also really excited to check out my new battery setup for my uh motor uh should give me a lot more life out of it but also ability to use the high mode um more liberally so also excited about that as we do have a little bit of a hike but we're gonna do a little, exp a little exploration hopefully get on some good action to stuff the cooler bag so as always stay tuned because you know what we're about to do get some fishing accomplished okay we are out in the water and i must say this new system right now we're going just about four knots feet off still cruising 3.5 knots trolling motor Trolling motor on high mode. Um, if I take my feet off, I'll still be going three knots on a day like today. And we're going against tide right now too, so that's pretty legit. Um, but I'm still pedaling just to get a little bit more speed. Um, and this new battery, you know, gives me so much more life. And it's such a light battery too compared to the other one. It's definitely upped my A range and B just maximum speed. So very satisfied so far. Let's get this out of the spot and put a hurting on these fish. We got some pretty high tide. It's about to peak in like the next hour, so I doubt we're gonna be moving much. Um, noticing some marks in the bottom, about 40 feet. Probably a porgies, but could be some bait with some life under it. So let's check it out. Right now, I'm just fishing a 3/8 ounce jig head with a three-inch gulp swing mullet, keeping it small because I expect a lot of porgies. But if we start getting a lot of gulp munched off or getting some fluke, I'll try with the jigging strip just to have some more productive drifts. Okay, so yeah, one thing I'll say um, that I wasn't saying while I was actually fishing was this was a weekend. There were quite a few people fishing this area, um, and the tide was pretty much slack too. So some of the areas that I had done pretty well in, in the past, I didn't really have the option to go to unless I was getting right up on top of someone, which obviously I'm not going to do. So trying the shallows for a little bit. I uh, had some action, but it wasn't anything too great. So after giving this a little bit of a go, I did end up going deeper while the tide wasn't moving. So we're going to check out how that all went. Got a lot of what I assume were porgy bites in that last drift. Cleaned out my gulp. Uh, I'm going to try a paddle shad. I'm just going through some of my older beat up gulp just to freshen up the reserves. Especially while this tide's not moving much. Oh, dogfish. Dogefish. I don't want that. It's not how we start a session. I do what we're marking down there. Thank you for not ruining my gulp. Okay, as expected, the porgies are extra relentless today, so you know what we're doing. We burned through two pieces of gulp in about 10 minutes, so we got a fat cow jig strip and a mangled piece of gulp. I trimmed down the jig strip to be more in line with the presentation of this gulp and jig head. Let's see what we can do.
down. Well, it begins. There's Porgy. Little guy. But we know there's some slabs in the mix. So I messed around the shallows for probably about an hour or so, but between the slack tide and just there being a lot of people there um, and the relentless porgies, I decided to move out deeper to see if, you know, the tide would start moving there a little faster and sooner and to see if there was more of a fluke bite. So I went out there and found a lot of sea robins. And whenever I did get a decent hit, it just did not go my way. So check, check out how this part of the session went. I definitely invested probably a bit too much time out there. Ooh, there we go. What's that? That's a sea robin. <laughs> Never mind. Bigger sea robin. That's a fluke. Yeah, we found a fluke. That's a good sign. And we dropped them. Let's get it back down. The fluke. Let's see if we can get it back down and get back on them. I have no idea what the state of my gulp is, but let's find out. Okay, we 100% lost a fluke on that last drift, so uh, I got some fluke ribbons left from the last time uh, I kept a fluke when I was fishing with Peter, so let's see if this could make a, a little bit more of a, a frenzied bite. Might be a small fluke. I think it's a fluke. It's picking up weight too. Might be good. It's got some good. Oh no! Dang it! Back down we go. He wasn't on there long. He was like halfway up, so I'm not very optimistic it's coming back, but we'll see. Probably should have gave him a little more time to eat it. With gulp, he can be pretty quick, but with fluke strips, you should probably let him eat it. Got him. That I think is a sea robin. Not sure though. Oh yeah. Can't land a fluke, but I can land these guys. If you run out of strips, this will be the next uh, course of action. That's a bite. Got him. Might be a good fluke. Or a sea robin. That's a sea robin. Big old sea robin.
Finally got a porgy. Ironically, doesn't even feel that big. It's not bad. Miss all the big ones and get this one. Typical. But, we got some time left. Let's try again. Big old porgy. Damn. Cool colors. ready. Foul hook, but still. No, oh, he's straight up fair hooked. That's a nice one. All right, I don't know how much we got of that we got, but we got this nice about 15 inch scup. We're gonna try and get one or two more and then we're gonna call it. Uh, I gotta get out of here, but do a little catch clean cook action. One more scup that size or two more like 11, 12 inches and I'm good. But I want to get enough meat to make some porgy patties. Wow. Not what I was hoping for. <laughs> that is the smallest porgy of the season without question. Let's see if we can get him back down there. There he goes. Porgy. Of course, I can't get a keeper now that uh, I'm running out of time and I've kept one. Well, that one will probably keep. It's not a big keeper, but I think it's at least 10. We get one, well, let's measure him. Yeah, he's 11, so that's a good keeper. So one more and then we'll we'll call it. We just got Porgy number two, one more of any keeper size and we're done and we go straight home. And then we'll pick up with the actual cooking of the Porgy patties, though it will not be today. I know that much. They'll do. That'll be number three. So you know what? That one came pretty quick, so let's see if we can get one more. Okay, that third one came so quick, and we gotta let him bleed out for a sec, so let's see if we can just get one more. Hopefully one a little bit bigger. But that will do. Those three will be more than enough. I've done it with two, and... They don't have a dramatically substantial amount of meat if you get one that's a bit larger. So much of these fish is head. Okay, folks, welcome back. So, uh, yeah, this is the second half of the video where I'm going to take the porgies that I got on uh, the first half and make something a little different out of them. So... You know, I'm just making this after work. Nothing super fancy. Uh, we got the porgies here. This is three porgies, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, just got home from work. I'm brain dead. Uh, nothing too special. Um, I'll show you what I do with these in a little bit. Uh, we have some saltines, which we're going to use kind of uh, to give a little bit extra um, oomph to the, these porgy patties. We're making porgy patties, but if I have not made myself clear, uh, in addition to that, we have some panko here, which we'll mix in with the porgy. 
We got some old base spice. Uh, we have some eggs, which we're gonna use for binding. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut up a little bit of onion too, just to add to this. And I might get some basil and chives as well, but uh, I'll probably just do all the stuff and do a mix of regular speed, fast motion, and I'll just kind of uh, speak over what's going on just to not annoy everyone that's here at the house. So I'll leave it at that uh, and I'll say my piece towards the end. Okay, so we're making these porgy patties. We got all the porgy from the other day, three porgies. One of them was pretty nice. The other two were just average, I'd say. Um, the nice thing about this particular thing, porgy patties, is uh, you don't need a ton of meat for this to work. You know, you get three porgies, that's all you need. That's more than enough, honestly, for two people. Uh, for three, it might be a little bit tight, but you can always adjust this recipe to your own liking. Um, and speaking of recipe, you know, I just kind of made this thing up after seeing uh, a fellow YouTube fisherman, Bob's channel. I'll be sure to link his video um, of where I got this idea from, but definitely check him out. He's a very entertaining YouTube channel. But let me just stress, like I kind of make this thing a little different every time I do it. So that being said, uh, before I do anything, I made these porgies or clean these porgies rather. I was really tired at the end of that day. So I'm just gonna make sure I got all the scales off and probably just double check that there's no bones before I start cutting into them. Okay, first step is we'll just take this porgy and cut into really small little pieces. Uh, the smaller the better I find, though you might want to adjust this to your own preferences. So just take this knife and just cut this stuff nice and small. Yeah, so I'm going to voice over most of the rest of this, but as you can see I'm just cutting this porgy up and uh, the knife was actually a little dull at first, so I made sure to sharpen it. But I'm just taking all the porgy, made sure there's no bones, just cutting into small little cubes. Um, pretty small, um, you could do big, but this is the way I like it. And I did that with all the porgy, made sure all the scales were off, uh, dried out the fillets a little bit, and I'll take that to the next step. As I said, I pretty much make this different every time I've gone about it. So uh, we do have a little garden in the front of our apartment. So we had some chives and some basil that I added to this, and it adds a nice little zing. Um, so here you see me cutting up the, the chives. Here you see me tearing up the basil, just adding it to the mix with the porgies. Pretty simple, just, you know, tear it up. It's all gonna shrink anyways. Here we had a small yellow onion, so I'm just chopping it up. I think I actually have like an onion and a half, but just cutting it really fine. You don't want any huge, huge chunks of onion in there, but again, adds a nice little flavor. Next, we have the saltines. I just crush them up, add them in there. Again, it kind of gives you like kind of a breading or something. Between this and the panko, those two things give you like kind of the, the base, other than obviously the porgy. Um, it's important because when you add the eggs, it kind of all kind of congeals together into a nice patty. Okay, so now we're seasoning. We got some salt and pepper. Uh, definitely adding a pretty liberal amount because it's quite a bit of like actual porgy patty base. So as you can see, I'm not skimping on any of this, uh, particularly when I get to the Old Bay. Uh, just add a little flavor again, makes it seem more like a seafood burger, fish burger, I don't know what you want to call it, but somewhere between like a crab patty and like a, a salmon burger or something, but obviously the porgies. And now obviously we have our eggs. Uh, I use two for this amount, though you might want to use three if you have more, one if you have less. Um, I don't whisk them, I probably should, but uh, I, obviously I'm not any kind of like real chef, but I'm trying to be more creative, just not making the same thing with the fish every time. And once we have all this together, I'm just mixing it by hands, with my hands. Obviously my hands are clean, I wash them. And just really getting it until it's finally that kind of consistency where you can actually mold it. Yeah, and once we had all that together, just molding it by hand, uh, you can kind of eyeball it, you know, how much you want to make, how many patties um, for each, you know, serving. This was a good amount, you know, three porgies plus everything else in here. This was a pretty easy four patties, though I could have just as, e just as easily made five smaller ones or three much larger ones, but these were just right. I was really happy with how these ones turned out. They were pretty meaty. Uh, it wasn't so much filler. Uh, they were pretty tasty too, so molding them up just before we throw them on the pan. All right, so once the pan was heated up, I used a cast iron, uh, kind of on medium heat, nothing super substantial. Um, I just had a little canola, canola oil on there and just laid them down. Probably gave them about 10 minutes on each side, um, maybe a little bit less in the second round, but I just wanted to make sure everything was cooked through 
uh, especially since these were on the, the thicker side. I guess, yeah, I made five instead of four. Uh, so I probably could have made four really jumbo patties or six, you know, smaller ones. But this was uh, just the right amount of meat. And again, obviously, porgies, when you get a lot, you don't get a ton of yield per fish. Uh, but I found that this is a good way to, you know, really stretch it out and do something a little bit different with the meat. So, yeah, I let them cook about 10 minutes on each side and gave them a flip. And this was the end result. And, of course, as you might remember from the, you know, porgy fish fillet episode, uh, I'm definitely the kind of person that wants to have cheese on their fish burgers. So, as you can see, I have a little cheddar on here now. Definitely hit the spot right. So, let that melt in a little bit. And then, ultimately, once things got going, here's the final result. Turned out quite delicious. Having a little asparagus with that as well. Uh, stacking them up. And, yeah, I can't stress enough it's a really fun little recipe if you want to try something a little different with your porgies uh, again if you don't get a, a buck don't get buckets and buckets of them it's a good way to stretch out what you got uh, get a little bit more bang for your buck and something a little different and fun and if i can handle it i know all of you can too so thank you for watching please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you have thank you so much and thank you for those of you that have been watching these videos from the beginning catch you in the next one of course goodbye from fishing